Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Mizuki here from Mr. Build It, and in today's video, I will show you how I made this very modern sliding barn door for 150 bucks, and you know what? That's included with the hardware. It's the perfect project for a beginner that can tackle it over in the weekend. So without wasting time, let me show you how I did it, and you know what? Let's get into the video. For the sliding door, in order to keep expenses low, I decided to go with a 1x2 common wood. Now this is the stuff that's the inexpensive wood that you could find in your local Home Depot in the lumber section. I bought 15 8 foot long pieces, uh, basically around 36 bucks or so, ripped them or split them on my table saw into 1x1 one one inch strips. I would put on some tunes, this might take you a little bit to accomplish. For the backboard or the actual part that will make the actual door, I needed something that would stain as evenly or as close to the common wood as possible. So I went with the always trusty 4x8 sheet of maple plywood, costing about 55 bucks for a 4x8 sheet. So I'm doing a little bit of a doodling here to get my uh, pattern all figured out. So this is kind of like the, the general idea of the door. So I'm going to take a bunch of these 1x2s and uh, I might have to end up stripping them in half even more. I was hoping not to have to cut them because it's so much easier just to buy this stuff and put it together. But the spacing will be so much more perfect. So we learn from these kind of things. This is all a prototype. So uh, I'm going to throw it on my table saw and start ripping all these 1x2s into um, three quarter inch pieces, I guess. Let's go. And then I secured the strips with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. So it's important you use the length that I'm actually using this project. That way the brad nails won't go through the back side of the plywood. Trust me, it'll make for a really bad day and a really ugly door. The rest of the three yards was all angles and repetition. You don't need to use protractor, just a simple T-bevel miter measuring tool. Uh, they're about 12 bucks or so, allows for you to match the required angle and match the angle up to your miter saw to make the cut. I would feel comfortable saying that this project was basically three different angles. So I had to basically set that on my saw. So nothing too crazy, it's just repetition. The best strategy is to use a scrap piece of one by one as a spacer block between each piece to keep all of the pieces symmetrical and then have the pieces overhang off of the plywood. Once they're all secured, roughly trim them a bit with a circular saw. That way they won't be in the way, especially when you're working in a small garage like I am. So far the project is coming out really good. All the joints are lining up pretty well. Uh, certain joints like this, they only go, well, I need 65 degrees, maybe a little bit more. My miter saw over there only goes to about 60. No big deal. Uh, I took a little sander, took a little bit of that edge off, you know, somewhere like that to make it look flush. But so far so good. I don't know, I think this is gonna be one of those good projects. So stick around. And when you are finally done and assembled everything, use a straight edge or a track saw if you fancy like that, and trim to size the door to the actual dimension you want it. Keep in mind you want it to overlap a few inches left, right, and top to bottom. That way you're actually including all the space. Now we are ready to beautify this door with a frame around it. For the frame, I trimmed a few pieces down to an inch and a half wide and cut the ends to 45 degree miters and secured with plenty of wood glue and brad nails. Now to get a quick and even application of wood glue, I'm using a wood glue bottle dispenser with a brush attachment from Rockler, which doesn't require for me to use my fingers or anything else to spread the wood glue before it starts falling on the ground. Oh, one of my favorite products, again, I'll link that in the description for you guys to check out, very inexpensive. Now for the actual stain, I'm using a color called Fruitwood by a company called Minwax. It's almost at every single store, really easy to get. A can of this is like seven bucks. I'm applying it using a foam brush. One thought I had is maybe to avoid getting in the nook and crannies, putting the stuff into a spray bottle and spraying it on. I've done stuff like that before. It just gets a little messy, but that's definitely an option you guys have. I only did one coat and then I just removed everything else with a rag. Can't be hiding together. 
All right, so this is the other side of the door, the inside part of the, obviously the bathroom. The outside, no issue to open it, but the inside we're gonna have a little bit of problem trying to open it up, so we need some hardware. I picked up these one by three flush pulls. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to use a router to kind of cut in, what is that, like a half an inch into it, and then screw down with these screws, and that way we'll have a nice, clean, subtle little opener. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's start again. What do you think? You don't like it? I love it. Should I start all over you? Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? So mean. I don't know if you've ever installed a sliding door before, but to keep the door from flapping front to back when opening, you need to create a quarter inch wide by half inch deep channel to run on top of a guy that will be screwed down to the ground, basically like a rail for it. To find the perfect middle, I use a center marking gauge from Rockler, the sweet quick little tool that feeds a pencil through it and scribes the middle, and then you can use a router with a guide or a circular saw with a few passes to create this said channel. To protect this beautiful stain from rubbing off as you know constant grabbing of the door, I sprayed four coats of a water-based satin polyurethane, which is basically like a clear coat, using a very inexpensive HVLP sprayer. HVLP just stands for high velocity, low pressure, so something easy enough for you to put something simple that doesn't need diluting and be able to spray it on pretty quick and easily. All right, pretty exciting day today because the hardware is finally here. I heard the UPS truck, so hopefully it stops here. Let's see. Oh. When the hardware came in, I laid out where the hangers would sit and marked out the holes and where they should go. The most important part is to prevent the tear out in the plywood when drilling all the way through. Now to prevent this, clamp a scrap piece of wood on the backside and then drill all the way through it. Trust me, this trick legitimately works every time. All right, so overall, here's the kit. So we saw the actual hangers on the door. These are the rails that it's gonna run by. These two kind of click in like puzzle pieces. These are the little spacers with the lag bolts. Now here's the most important part. Typically, yes, you could imagine just mounting these things straight to the drywall, but the reason you wanna do this, one of two things. Number one, drywall tends to sink all of your spacers into the wall as you push them in. You don't wanna do that, it changes the gappings. And number two, you have trim board here. So that is another space that's in the way. So the solution to this problem is you wanna pick up some backer, anything could be a backer piece. Only well, important part is it needs to be at least one by four or one by six and the most important part has to be real wood. So we're gonna throw this up there and then mount our railing to it. This is probably my second time ever installing a sliding hardware and I always learn something new every time but it always, there's something in the way every single time, uh, some kind of hurdle we need to go over. So the best things to always do to prepare is just make sure you identify all of your studs and where they are. Make sure you put the little backer piece, the little hardware piece that the rail actually attaches to and then from that point on, make sure everything's leveled and you'll be just fine. I can see the fire that we made just to save us When we try to make up for never letting go 
said the things we promised not to say that we break up just to start all over even though we know Well, thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys like what you see, if you like videos like this or like the shower renovation stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. Like, comment, share with your friends. Hey, follow me on social media if you guys want to chat, whatever, have deeper questions, get to know me. I'll put a link down in the description below with all of my social media stuff. I'm going to go finish this and go make out my wife. So tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.